Well, then some vets came to us and they said, but we also want to teach classes. So something else that's going to be happening are quarterly intensives. And the way that this differentiates itself from such things as Alaska Dance Theater is that it's like for everybody who's like not really, really like ballerinas, ballerinas <laughs> which Alaska Dance Theater is a fantastic organization and has like the highest quality dance anywhere. I mean, they're amazing. And uh, but you know, then there's people like me. I'm taking a hip hop class right now. <laughs> I couldn't be wider if I tried. Um, really cool. But I'm really trying. I'm really trying. So I'm looking forward to the hip hop intensive because then I'm going to learn how to do things that would mess up my suit if I tried them right now. So I'm not gonna do it. did you know that we got our radio license this year? Do you have any idea? I don't. I'm a little afraid. Jeremy Landsman, who actually literally wrote some of the FCC book, like the book, uh, was like, my condolences, young sir. Is uh, Daniel here? Daniel's over there. He's Hi. taking the video, as always. Daniel, will you come talk to us about KONR, please? KONR, Out North Radio. Um, short 1061 FM is the frequency that we are now officially on and probably some of you have known the story about having an assigned frequency that has been not able to be used but about uh, three weeks ago the aforementioned Jeremy Landsman and I ended up climbing up hooking transmitter to an antenna and sending a signal out from the top of his house and uh, I called different people around town who were hearing it so that was like our first broadcast on 106.1 that we're at right now is we've got the gear, we've got to get 150 foot up a tower, which um, Morris Communication has been super generous with us and helped a lot of this happen. And uh, this started out as kind of um, an impossible mission. And it's fantastic to see it getting to the stage right now where we can start building the content. And so, Tune to uh, to 1061. Check periodically, but probably within the next month, you'll start hearing some stuff from us. Can we hear some stuff from these people too on the radio? Can we hear some stuff from what people? These people. Oh, all people will be on KO on our radio. <laughs> all people and all genres. It's like a playlist with me in charge. <laughs> here a couple years ago when there was a production called Sweet. Okay, I was told that I don't need to talk. So, uh, I'm doing exactly what I was told to do. Um, anyway, uh, Off the Rock is um, a project that pushes the envelope for two, two kind of worlds. One of them is the clinical psychological world. I'm a clinician. I um, I'm the manager of the mental health program at Aquila Inc. And um, what clinical work is, you sit with another person, or it's a group, but let's say one person, you sit in a room and you create that very intimate relationship, I mean, when it works. Um, and it's kind of, you hear people, fantasies, and it's all very confidential and very secretive, and uh, nobody outside knows what's happening. And then you go outside and you said, well, you know, you tell your partner, you know, I really need to talk with my therapist. And then you go again to that room and it's very secret to you. It's very confidential. And, then, and you do that for 10 years and you feel a lot better. <laughs> but um, no, really, I have a lot of appreciation uh, to the profession. But what we did with Off the Rock, we kind of pushed the envelope. We took uh, that clinical, very intimate, confidential material and brought it on stage. And <laughs> the moment, uh, uh, Mike um, helped us do it. We took a group of women in recovery. Um, they were from um, residential treatment and half halfway houses. 
and uh, we did a draw therapy workshop with them for four months and no it was six months it was six and Daniel was doing the video uh, but we uh, did drama therapy and we did that core confidential stuff and Chatsy Schaefer was uh, a part of our group. Um, she joined us, she did everything we did and then she wrote a play called Sweet. We came back to Art North and did a production of that play and um, that was kind of uh, pushing the envelope in a very big way for my agency. Uh, but I think we also push the envelope for theater because it's all about transformation, real transformation that happened to real people. And um, our next production will be about secret. And uh, what we can see is something about sweet. Uh, thank you. Another theater group to introduce. Um, be here now. Are you here now? <laughs> we are here now. <laughs> I think that I'll get it. We're 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 like twins. Hi everybody, my name is Caleb Bourgeois. This is Jeremy Gaunt and Hannah Dante and Scott Heverling. And we are part of Be Here Now, an artistic revolution. Uh, we are a group of eleven council members uh, making up a uh, basically a young artist theater group. Um, we just got our start a couple weeks ago. Uh, Scott emailed me and uh, this thought that we've had in the process of about a year and a half finally came together. So we've been scrambling to put everything together, but um, we are here now. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm just going to read kind of a little bit of our mission statement. Uh, we don't have anything big prepared for you today, um, but we will in the future. So uh, we are Be Here Now, an artistic revolution. Young Alaskans creating and promoting art here and now. Our artists from several disciplines have come together with one thought in mind. Why wait for tomorrow to become professionals when we can do it here in Alaska right now? While producing multiple professional-level musical theater pieces, including Spring Awakening, which you'll see here in June of 2012, members of this repertory company will educate the community and their peers through workshops and hands-on training. With a spirit of community collaboration and truth, beauty, and love of self and others, we invite you to be here now. Um, part of our proposed uh, season uh, will be a chorus line, and uh, The Wild Party, which is a not-so-well-known show, and Spring Awakening, which you'll see here in 2012. Um, we are looking for funders right now, uh, putting out grants and trying to get our money together so we can get this going. Um, we will have auditions for our repertory company um, in about a week and a half on the 18th, which is a Sunday uh, here at Out North. I'm so excited. <laughs> How many of you know Karina Delgado? We got her too. Hey, Karina, come talk to us about what you're doing. Will you? Can I hold your purse? <laughs> All right. Well, um, I have two of these, so if that means anything. One is a. Uh, one says Artistic Amnesty Project, and the other says One Soul. So I'll talk a little bit about each, if that's okay with you. Does that mean that I have six minutes? No. Ah, <laughs> why? Okay, basically, uh, the Artistic Amnesty Project is a leg of One Soul. And the way that it all came together is, uh, once upon a time, uh, a performance poet from Alaska, this guy right here, got invited to California to, to do a show over there. Nothing really came of the, of the show that I did, but I was on a radio show and performed a piece. From that piece, and this is the abridged version, <laughs> uh, a group of inmates at Folsom Prison just became uh, enamored with my work and they flooded the radio station with requests for my book and CD, which then ended up in the library. And unbeknownst to me, I developed this following inside Folsom Prison. And, um, <laughs> and um, there's an amazing poet there, his name is Spoon Jackson, and he is uh, world renowned and um, he has uh, some um, 
individuals from Sweden, they perform his plays, and he is just absolutely phenomenal. And if you get a chance, uh, please do Google him, Spoon Jackson. And uh, he runs a poetry program inside Folsom Prison. Well, they contacted the radio station and tried to find out if I could come down there to, to perform for them, um, which took some undoing because I am a felon. And so uh, I had to go through a whole bunch of uh, a whole bunch of red tape in order to be able to go in there and do it. And I was able to do that. And from that visit to Folsom Prison, just letters and poems and, and so much outpour of support came from Folsom Prison. So what I did was I took their poems and their uh, their short essays and their art, and I tried to put it all together in what was known as the Artistic Amnesty Project. And the idea behind that is a correspondence network for incarcerated artists. And this year, finally, will be the first year that we will publish the artwork of the incarcerated artists and all the proceeds from the book sales will be pulled together in a grant that will be given away to one inmate who is re-entering society that year to help with their acclimation. And now, we're actually working with the Arts and Corrections program there and expanding to um, here to Alaska. We've been inside Spring Creek. We're doing stuff inside Highland Mountain. And so we're impacting the community that we, that we live in as well. And that December in 2000, I was drowning. In the lack of my own identity, I was presented with the skeletal frame of who I wish I became. Names like Epictetus, Marcus Aurelius, names like Jesus. The philosophies just opened up my mind to the spirit of the martyr and the destiny of ancestry led me to the death before dishonor kamikaze state of mind. And for a time, I left Machiavellianism behind because in a world so bleak, I needed idealism to stay on my feet because the bills weren't paid, my rent was late. And I fed my baby boy off of beer sweat and platforms, stockings torn, aprons worn, $2 tips to hear local dicks spill their cocktails. It's a night job. But the sunrise shines light on my nine to five and I'm barely alive sneaking cat naps in the bathroom stall. And my head would rest best on the toilet paper roll. And I was living for the stolen moments. He was holding me, consoling me. We kissed and my lips bled poetry 